Hello there. Thank you for taking the time to click on this video. I do appreciate it. And if you clicked on this video, you want to learn a little bit about how to keep yourself warm in the winter months and when fishing. And I'm going to help you with that today. So let's start with the feet. How do I keep my feet warm when you're out here on a cold fall or winter day fishing so you don't turn into blocks of ice, right? There's nothing worse than having cold feet. That'll drive you off the river very quickly. So there's something that I do that really does work well for your feet. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna have a pair of good liners. I bought mine from REI. They're basically just a hiking liner. The next is going with a pretty thick wool sock. And I use this sock called Smart Wool. It's more about the feel. I like to have a lot of cushion. I like to have a lot of thickness in my sock that goes over the liner. Now, the next part is critical. You don't want to oversize on your feet too much, right? You don't want to get too much going on. More layers actually can be bad because what happens, it ends up compressing in your boot and compressing in your wader boot. And that actually makes things colder in the long run, even though you might have four or five layers on. That's not better. So just stick with two solid layers, starting with a liner and then a thick smart wool sock. That way you have insulation inside your wader boots and inside your wader sock, and you're not going to get that compression, which then leads to cold feet. So those two things really help keep my feet warm. And now also be sure to stick to the end of the video because I've got a secret weapon, a secret weapon on how to stay warm during these winter months. Okay, let's talk about the top half. So we talked about the bottom half, right? You still wanna have a thermal layer up top. And generally, if you buy long thermal underwear, they're gonna have a top to match. So that's typically what I start off with. I do have a 32 degree shirt. It's really lightweight and does a pretty good job. I either use that or the top that the particular thermal ended up coming with. Next layer is kind of a taller neck and it only has maybe a three quarter zip and it, it is a synthetic blend shirt, lightweight. I like how it feels. It just adds that extra layer of insulation on now. I generally will put on a fleece coat. So I have a marmot fleece coat, again, very lightweight. If it's super cold, I've got this Patagonia right here that has some good insulation and very lightweight that sometimes goes on top of that. So I've got four layers. All right, so now on top of everything, you wanna have a good raincoat. And not all raincoats are created equal, right? You could have a shell, but if that shell isn't rated for hours and hours of rain, it will start to leak. With my experience, I've had two different shells and after about two to three hours of heavy rain, I started to get wet. So I've upgraded, right? I've upgraded to the new Drift Raincoat because it's lightweight, it's made out of the same kind of Gore-Tex material as the waders, and it wicks water. So get yourself a good raincoat or a good shell that's gonna wick water for hours in any type of rainfall or downpour, right? If you're out there fishing in the downpour. Super important because as soon as the water penetrates, your layers, you're gonna get cold. So it's super important to have a solid rain jacket. Now, again, you wanna have one you can move in, right? I'm not wearing one today because there's no chance of rain today, but you wanna have a rain jacket that's comfortable because you're doing, you're doing this a lot, right? So you're waving your arms around, you're screaming at people to get out of your fishing hole, you're screaming fish on. You wanna be able to move around when you have your raincoat on. So be sure to do your homework and what I found on the drift side is their raincoat is super comfortable and I can move around in it. And I will leave links down in the description of the video that links to all these products that I'm talking about if you want to pick up some of these things for yourself as well. All right, so what do we wanna talk about next? Next is how do you keep your brain warm, right? And I really love wearing these fleece beanies. These fleece beanies just do a great job with keeping everything warm and they're super lightweight. Love mine, mine is from MTAC. I've got a couple of these because I always misplace them, but they they keep me warm. And it covers just enough of my ear to where it's, you know, the tips of your ear sometimes get cold, but it's just really feels good on my head. It's not too bulky. A lot of times it's like become my, it's become my little pillow, right? A lot of times I'll wear this thing sitting in my house as well because it's comfortable, super, super comfortable but this fleece beanie really does a great job keeping the cold out of my brain. So 
that's what I end up using to keep things cold or keep things warm up here. All right, so now let's talk about hands, right? I have two different things that I use to keep my hands warm. I prefer to use fingerless gloves because when you are messing around with a fly or fly gear, it's really tough to do if you got a full glove on, right? You just kind of have to tough it out and sometimes your fingers are gonna get cold. But if you have a fingerless glove and I've got a wool with a fleece line glove that one of my favorites, they're actually falling apart. I need to get a new pair, but I wear those wool fleece line gloves and they're super, super comfy. The other is a pair of Sims and it has the little mitten that folds over. And on the really cold days, I'll wear those and I'll flip those over sometimes to kind of warm up my fingers. But it's just, it's one of those things, your hands are getting cold, but this helps mitigate it. And when you catch a fish as well, you don't want to do that with gloves on. So you do have to take them off and handle the fish and then put your glove back on. But fleece lined gloves are the way to go. Those keep my hands going for hours and hours and hours when fishing winter. It's gonna get cold, but it helps mitigate the penetration of the cold into your hands so things are still working. All right, now for the secret weapon. So I discovered this recently and this helps a ton, especially if you're in a float tube or if you're on a really ultra cold day. I found a vest that's insulated and heated. It uses a lithium battery that recharges. You have about seven hours of charge time, but it has all these coils in the critical places like right on your back, around your neck, in your chest. It works fabulous to help keep your core warm. And that is when you really start getting cold, right? If, you, if your core starts to get cold and you start to get the shivers, your day's about done. This vest, this heated vest, has been my secret weapon. A lot of times I'll put that right over the insulative layers that I put on prior. So generally it's one or two layers and then I've got that Oros vest. And a lot of times I'll put this Patagonia or I'll put my Marmot over that. So it just keeps things nice and toasty warm in my core and it just makes me last for hours. So that is my secret weapon when it comes to fishing in the colder months. All right, so now, if your neck it gets cold, and sometimes mine does as well, I don't necessarily like having things up on my neck, but I do have a fleece, what is it, a fleece ascot? I guess it is, but it's just like a, it's like a round top of a turtleneck. I, I, I don't know what they actually call them, but it's fleece. It's just a round, maybe eight inches tall that goes around my neck when it's like ultra cold and windy. A lot of times I'll wear that. I don't necessarily like wearing it because it always seems to kind of ride up on my chin and I don't know, I don't, I don't like the feeling of just kind of being strangled. So, but I do wear that and have worn it on colder days when it's also windy, right? And things are just starting to cut through. So are waders important to keep you warm? A lot of people will talk about using neoprene waders because they do have a little more insulative properties than a breathable wader but I have found the breathable waders are just far more comfortable. Where your heat gets locked in, right? The insulation happens underneath the wader. So I don't use a neoprene wader when I'm fishing the winter or cold months. I just layer up beneath them to all of the insulation I've stuffed in the waders itself with what we talked about earlier. So you could use neoprene, but I found them to be more restrictive in movement. I don't like how tight they feel. I just don't like using neoprene waders. I find best success, and I fish in some pretty cold climates, that by putting those layers on your body and topping it off with a good pair of waders, that's the way to go. So what's the most important thing about staying warm? The most important thing about staying warm, or actually a product of staying warm, is that you can sit out here and fish that much longer because if you can spend more time on the water the more chance you have to catch a fish like this look at this fish i swear this is either a very large trout or it's a steelhead look at this thing oh, oh, oh. that's freaking huge <laughs> wow oh, oh. Fish on. And that was a gorgeous fish. And we were out here for hours and hours and hours. And if I wouldn't have been layered up properly, and you'll notice I had the neck guard on that day because it was windy as well. We stuck it out and I caught that beautiful trout because I wasn't getting cold and I kept on fishing. And it rewarded me with a great big winter rainbow. Gotta love that. 
And hey, if you're new to fly fishing and you need a little help with your fly fishing cast, I put together a video right here, super, super easy. You do these five things, you will cast your fly rod a little bit further. All right, everybody, until the next time, fish on.